Hi, this is Ushio, and welcome back to Angels with Scaly Wings. It's been a while since I last played this, and in that time, my game kind of got wiped, so I managed to get all the endings back. I haven't got the secret ending yet, that's going to come in due course, but otherwise I think we're good to go for another mod. And today's mod is called The Last Dragon. It's got multiple endings, and yeah, we'll see how we got on. Might have to split it into more than one video. We'll see how we go. Let's make a start. So there are some things you need to do to get this mod to go. So I've looked at the rules. I don't actually know. I wouldn't be able to guess it myself. So you have to do Lorem's route up to chapter 3. Doesn't matter if you're nice or nasty. As long as you cover it. So that is covered. And also we need to get Remy's bad ending. And also give him the PDA during chapter 4. These are the rules. So yeah, skip. And... To get Remy's bad ending, you don't ask him about his kids. So, have you ever talked to a professional? We'll go with that. This puts us on the bad route. Sorry, Remy. It's going to be a bad time. And this is the final thing. Yeah, in chapter four, take the PDA to the library. And that's it. That should put us on the route to the mod. This is going to be interesting. So in Remy's bad ending, wasn't it Remy got abandoned in the human world on his own? Wasn't that how that ending went? So this is it, we're on to chapter 5. So let's, let's see what this mod can offer. Hopefully I've done everything right and that I guess on the good path. So we know a lot of this. We see Reza, he negotiates, it fails, he pulls out a gun, shoots people. We, we know he shoots people, he always does this shit. I think this is a good place to pick up. So we're going to have some of that original ending and then we're going to move into the mod. So in this situation, Remy has been shot, Ism is being killed, Reza's run away through the portal. Okay, I made my way back to Remy to look for something to treat his wound. Given everything that just transpired, I had no idea what was going to happen. I also wondered where the administrator had gone. I checked a few of the rooms and even found a first aid kit that I used to treat both of us. Soon, however, I heard steps behind me and as I turned around, I was surprised to see another human face. It was a soldier. Who are you? What are you doing here? I asked. We're here to save you. Reza told us about everything, he replied. I didn't know what Reza had told them, but I certainly didn't want to leave just yet. I tried to protest and told them about Remy, and the soldier let me know that they would take care of it. For now, however, their orders were clear, and I was to come with them immediately. Another soldier arrived and took the generator with him. Then they escorted me back through the portal. After all this time, I wondered what would happen now to our world and the dragons. I arrived on the other side only to be met by a team of EMTs who were already expecting me. I was urged to lay down in a cot, which was quickly transported into the back of an ambulance. They took off my bandages and examined my wounds as I heard them calling out medical terms I didn't understand. A breathing mask was put on me, and soon I lost consciousness. I wasn't sure what exactly Reza had told them, but with him dead and me wounded, humanity decided to take what they thought was theirs by force, which included the underground building itself. Hoping for a diplomatic solution, the dragons retreated and borders were established, all within a manner of days. The thousands of people living in our city were quickly relocated. For them, it was a better solution than any other. Here, they had an already working infrastructure, buildings and things looked just like they used to. When I awoke from my induced coma, it was with the expected dose of confusion, as I had to realise the place was deserted, and it hadn't been just the building, it was the entire city. Everyone was gone. Whatever Reza had told humanity had been enough for them to ultimately decide to leave me behind as a traitor while they sought out their promised land. So all of humanity left, headed to the dragon world, and left me here. Damn. To their credit, they could have killed me, but just leaving me behind and to my own devices was exactly the kind of punishment I would expect from them. I wasn't even sure how much time had passed since I returned. But they had permanently disabled the portal. I was at least able to find plenty of supplies they'd left behind as I roamed the city to make myself a new life. After a few days of checking building after building and getting to know my new surroundings, I was surprised to see a shadow flying overhead. It was a dragon. So this is the human world. Hey! Blinded by the sun, I couldn't quite make out the dragon before it landed and approached. It was Remy. What are you doing here? 
I've been looking for you for the past few days. Honestly, I wasn't sure whether I was going to find you at all. I don't even know how long it's been since I last saw you. It must have been a few weeks. Okay, why did you come here? We need you. You have to tell them what really happened, what Reza did and everything else. After he went back, the soldiers found me and I was interrogated. When they were negotiating with our council, they realised that Reza's account of what happened here differed a lot from what really went down. Of course, there are a lot of blanks they need to fill in too. They needed to find someone who was willing to go back and find you, and so I did. Besides, I owed it to you for everything that you've done for me. I guess they realised the error they made by leaving you behind, but now all of us need you as a witness. You must tell them the truth. Okay, how's the wound? It's fine, I was patched up pretty well, all things considered. Come on, we've got no time to lose. The portal was just around the corner, but how are we going to get back? They deactivated it? I know, that's why they gave me something to repair it. Let's go then. So we're still on the old ending. A few minutes later, we arrived at the portal. I thought about alternative options, considering we will be able to use it now. Time travel came to my mind, and while I knew about the portal's capabilities to do so, I had no idea how. Either way, I would do what I could to make things right. I watched as Remy reactivated the portal, using its interface with his somewhat clumsy paws. Something's not right. I can't find the other portal. A terrible realisation hit me as I considered, hoping for other possibilities. You said it was a few weeks since I last saw you, right? And you've been looking for me for how long? A week? Yeah. Okay, Remy, I think I got some bad news. What's that? Suddenly, I heard someone approaching us from behind, and after I turned around, it was the administrator who stood before us. I finally found you. She not dead, she's still kicking. Come on, we need to go back. Back? They're all gone. What are you talking about? In the time you were here, the meteorite you knew about collided with Earth. The civilization you knew, and the human settlement, are no more. What? How? Reza knew this was going to happen. How ironic that Reza would drag himself through the portal in his gravely injured state to try and save humanity by telling them about the generator, you and the meteorite, only to fall on deaf ears about that last crucial part. And now, they're all gone. I wasn't talking about returning to them, however but going back to a time even before that, the day of your arrival. You want us to use the portal for time travel? I knew about the possibilities, but doing it for real? It's fascinating. Can Rennie come too? No, it's complicated enough as it is. Then I don't want to go. I don't think you realised what's at stake here. All the others you've met are dead. Their whole civilization was wiped out in one fell swoop, and their world lies in ashes. Only we can go back and try to prevent this from ever happening. I need to stay and protect Remy. He can't be left alone in a world as desolate as this. He won't survive. Okay, so with this we have moved on to the mod content. This is all new from here. Do you think I'll let you do what you want when everything has already been destroyed by the comet? If you refuse, nothing will be changed and the dragons will be gone forever. Please, you'll be fine. You need to go. Save them all. Remy, I'm not prepared to go through the portal and leave you behind. It would be extremely cruel of me to ruin any sense of hope you might have had after everything you went through. This isn't just about me or what I want. If I have to live in even greater despair so that there could be a chance for you to save everyone, then I'll gladly suffer knowing that my pain has meaning. He's got a point. It would be wise of you to listen. Besides, you'll forget most of the things you do now when you step through the portal. There just has to be another way. And suddenly, I remembered Lorem and Ipsum's theories on time travel and different timelines. Maybe there was still a glimmer of hope left. Wait, what if only one of us travelled back in time, instead of us both? Wouldn't that simply cause another timeline to be created? Are you suggesting that I should be the only one to go through the portal? Yeah, if what I believe about time travel seems to be correct, then you should be able to work with the version of me that appears in the newly created timeline. Remember, if both of us went, then that would most likely drain the last reserves of the energy left for Remy to use. Thousands upon thousands have gone from the city through the portal. Add that to the energy already used by me when I was put in a coma by other humans, and you have enough energy to activate the portal one more time at best. As long as simply one of us goes through, we can try again while Remy can survive in this harsh world. This is getting confusing. 
You really do not wish to listen, do you? Ah, uh, very well. I'll step through the portal and let you have your way. Only remember that you have doomed yourself and your companion in this timeline. Okay, bye, bye, Izumi. See ya. Alright, later's gone. The administrator activates the portal and steps through. After a flash of blinding light, she disappears, presumably back to the day of my arrival. I looked at Remy. He seems to have a confused, yet grateful expression on his face. I don't understand. What's wrong? Why would you do all this for me? Why do you want to throw a better life away for me, of all people? Okay, we got options. There are multiple endings. Five, I do believe. So we're going to have to be careful about what we say. Okay, we got, I care about you a lot. I don't want anyone to tell you what to do. No reason. Um, I care about you. Let's keep things good. Because I care too much about you to simply leave you alone. As far as I know, I'm the only one left here. I couldn't possibly abandon you just so that you could figure everything out on your own. I see. I guess what's done is done. What do we do now? Now, I guess I have to introduce you to what's left of my world. Normally, this is the part where I would show you around the city, but I assume that you must be tired after flying for so long. It's no problem. I could have gone for much longer if necessary. We dragons have had a lot of energy compared to what I've seen in humans. Still, I think that a bit of rest would be beneficial. I could always show you my home, or what's left of it. Much of it is now degraded, especially since I originally went through the portal. There's only so much I can do with such a limited amount of resources left after all. There's something really important you need to know. You can tell me anything, dude. There's a chance that we can rebuild the city. How? There weren't any generators to keep the city from falling apart before, and there aren't any left to keep the both of us afloat right now. Besides, the portal generator can only do so much before we run into some problems. I brought three generators with me through the portal, as well as the PDA you gave me. I figured that since your energy would be depleted, I brought some generators so that we could use one to power the portal, enough for you to come back. I brought the other two just in case you needed them after you awoke from your coma. That was before everything I heard about the comet, though. Okay, so does that mean we can all go back? We could do that with the three. Um, yeah, you're a hero, Remy. You just gave the two of us actual hope for survival. You're a hero. Please, it's the least I could do, especially after everything you did for me. It seems only fair that I should help you one way or another. You always went out of your way to help me, so I felt that I needed to do the same. Besides, I only did what seemed like the morally correct option at the time. What about the part that you mentioned about fixing the portal? Well, the council gave it to me after the humans described a certain problem that caused it to work in a rather strange way. All I did was install that part into the controls of the portal here and try to activate it. And the generators? Where are they now? They should be safe in one of the buildings nearby. I'll go get them for you. Remy flew off into the distance toward one of the buildings along the outskirts of the city. A while later, he returned with what seemed to be a large basket in his mouth. Here are the generators and your PDA. I hope you don't mind that I put them in this basket that I found somewhere. I picked the generators up from the basket and studied them. They seemed to be slightly larger than the ones offered in the trade, but far lighter. Now it made sense how Remy could carry these through the portal with him undetected. A sense of hope now washed over me. You actually managed to bring them with you? We might stand a chance at rebuilding this city now. I'm glad that I could have helped you. Oh, and don't worry, I took extra care at not dropping them, so this should all still be fine. We continued to talk for hours, catching up on what happened while I was in my coma. Eventually we realised just how long we talked for. Well, looks like time caught us off guard. Let's go home before it's too late. Lead the way. This is home. Wow. We entered my home. Upon looking around, I noticed a new crack that had formed since yesterday. I should really try to do some repairs to this place when I get the time. I asked Remy to sit down on an old couch that I had, and surprisingly wasn't really suited for dragons. Remy didn't seem to mind, as he made himself comfortable. At least he actually fits on furniture explicitly designed for humans only. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry there aren't any lights or things not falling apart. 
Don't worry about it. I understand the situation humanity was in, after all. Do you want something to eat? I imagine you must be starving. That would be really kind of you. What do you have? Not much. I've got some canned food, as well as some pieces of dried meat. It seems that the humans only left me with food that has a long shelf life. Would some of it be pieces of dried steak then, by any chance? Uh, one steak filled dinner coming up. Yeah, we'll do that. Interesting. I wonder how the taste would compare to the taste back home. It's surprisingly similar, actually. I think you'll enjoy this. Then I can't wait to taste your cooking. I prepared the beet by cutting it into more manageable pieces, as well as adding some spices. I then started to cook by emptying a can of mixed vegetables into a pot and letting it boil while the chunks were searing. An intense smell filled the room that reminded me a lot of the steakhouses we used to have before the soda flare. Soon the food was ready to be served. Here you go, I hope this is enough. You'd be correct on that part, looks like we can guess each other's portions fairly well then. Regardless, I hope you like it. My cooking's not the best. Well, you're the best human cook I know after all. Um, thanks. I started to eat the food I prepared, and while it didn't taste nearly as well as Remy's cooking, it definitely tasted better than I thought it would. So, how do you like your first taste of human food? It's surprisingly good actually. It tastes shockingly similar to the things we had back at home. I see. Yeah, I told you the taste would be similar. Sadly, this is as good as it gets around here. However, maybe we could change that. With generators, we could restart food production if we somehow get the facilities up and running. Don't you think that we should maybe save those ideas for tomorrow? I need some time to wrap my head around everything that happened today. I still haven't accepted the fact that everything I knew is now gone, and at this point, I don't think I ever will. Uh, we should leave this for tomorrow. At least we're here together. Maybe dessert would help. Um... At least we're together, there is that. I suppose it's all that we have left now. Truth be told, I don't know what I would have done if you weren't here with me in this strangely familiar world, and for that I'm really grateful, even if I don't agree with your decision to stay here. Well, regardless of what I decided, any struggles we'll face are struggles we'll face together, no matter what. Remember, I'll always be there for you, even if you feel otherwise. As will I. Now, should I help you clean the dishes, or are you going to take care of it? I'll do the dishes. I don't think the sink is big enough for dragons of your size to be able to use it effectively. You've got a point. It's going to take getting used to. I took away the dishes and cleaned them while I got lost in thought. Upon finishing them, I saw that Remy had fallen asleep on the couch. Join, go to room. Uh. I don't know, does he want that alone time to think about it, or does he want the company? Uh, we'll join, we'll join. I decided to join Remy, and lay down next to him, in the little space available to me. I had no trouble falling asleep, with Remy softly squeezing me against the back of the couch. Is it a new day? Morning, morning. I woke from my sleep, knowing that a day full of tasks awaited me. On my way to get breakfast, I spotted Remy making what seemed to be pancakes. How he managed to gather all the fresh ingredients necessary is beyond me, considering that I own nothing even remotely usable for baking. When I approached Remy, he seemed to be mildly startled, but soon smiled at me. Oh, morning! How did you sleep? Uh, okay, it was fine. Happy for you then, a good night's sleep can often influence how the rest of the day follows. I also make you breakfast, if you'd like some. Thanks, sir. Uh, can I ask how you got the ingredients to make pancakes? Last time I checked, I didn't have anything like flour available. The recipe I'm using has a lot of substitutes, considering that you don't have the necessary ingredients. Don't worry, it's still perfectly edible though. Hesitating, I took a bite of the pancakes offered to me. Surprisingly, they tasted exactly like the pancakes I used to eat on a frequent basis during my college years and more evidence towards Remy's cooking being better than mine. Judging by your expression, I'd say you like the food, or am I mistaken? Remy, once again, you show me that your cooking's amazing. These taste exactly like the ones I always used to eat before the flare hit. Is that so? Well, maybe it's because I studied the recipes on your PDA while you were sleeping. 
No wonder they tasted so familiar. However, that still doesn't answer how you could get the taste spot on without the original ingredients though. That's the secret, I'll be keeping to myself for now. Okay, we finished our breakfasts and prepared for the busy day ahead. I wondered how much time we have left before all our supplies are drained. It's necessary that we get the food and water facilities up and running, but how we're going to accomplish such a daunting task is still beyond me. And suddenly, Remy calls out. Wait for me? I waited a bit for Remy to catch up with me, as I walked to the entrance to the now slightly less deserted city. Sorry for holding you back, I had a bit of trouble getting everything ready before going out. Okay, don't, don't worry about it, don't stress too much about it. Until I suddenly land myself in danger due to negligence on my part, I'm pretty sure it's not going to happen anytime soon. Not if I get everything ready beforehand like I'm supposed to. I suppose that's true. So, any ideas what we should do today? I figured that you could show me around what's left of the city. I didn't have the time to explore much after arriving here, and your PDA only gave a rough idea of where you might be, not necessarily the entire layout of the city. Sounds like a plan. It would be for the better if you had the opportunity to familiarise yourself with our world. Be sure to stay close to me though, the last thing I want right now is for you to get lost. Oh, of course. We walked for a while until we came to a flat area near the centre of the city. This area was always used as a sort of marketplace where people could exchange services for resources, but now it felt eerily quiet. Here's a good place to start our little tour. This is what used to be the trading plaza. All sorts of activity used to occur here like, unsurprisingly, trades. This is also quite a popular place to meet with others due to its location. What kind of trades used to take place here? We used to do work in exchange for the resources some of us had left. This was frowned upon by the officials, as we all had to pull in our resources so that we could all survive. It didn't stop certain people from taking advantage of others though. Oh I see. It's a shame how some people only want to benefit themselves, when in the end everybody, including them, suffers. Well, if it didn't hurt the city as a whole in a problematic way, then there would always be those who would turn a blind eye for a few scraps of resources. We walked through the streets until we reached the old water treatment plant. Without power, any water that still happened to remain in the old wells and reservoirs would contain diseases, which could potentially cause serious problems if consumed. This is where most of the city's water was treated. Sadly, without power, the water could not be made safe enough for human consumption anymore. Couldn't you simply have boiled the water to kill anything that might have lived in it? Not on a big enough scale. The little water we had left from the wells was already murky at best, let alone clean and safe. Most people still took that water and boiled it as an extra security measure, but you could only drink so much dirty water before you start to get some serious problems. It's a miracle how so many people could have survived like this. Looks like humans are far more resilient than I thought. Nearby was a factory which provided a great amount of food for the city. It was in the lesser state of disrepair than the water treatment plant, but would still need a lot of attention if it was to be able to function at full capacity. That building looks extremely old. Are you sure it's safe to be here? Yeah, it's still pretty safe to explore around, even if it's worn down. It's surprisingly one of the safer buildings here. It doesn't make me feel any better though. Shouldn't the officials have decommissioned it before somebody got hurt? The officials didn't want to expend any more resources on unnecessary things, such as decommissioning old buildings. If they were to collapse, then it would just be something that happened, nothing more, nothing less. Oh, I see. Suddenly, I realised that there could still be a small seed bank somewhere on the factory grounds, and since crops were likely to fail in this environment, a backup which contained crop seeds only seemed logical for the survival of the city. Remy, I'm going to need your help here. There could be a small container nearby that might contain a few types of seeds which we could use to regrow crops after some basic repairs have been done to the necessary facilities. Sure thing. We quickly searched around the exterior of the factory grounds, but nothing was found. It seems that if there were any seeds left, it would already have been taken. Maybe someone took it with them before entering the portal. Disappointed, we left the factory grounds, hoping that the next few places we went to were more interesting. Well, that was a waste of time. Anywhere else you'd like to go? Yeah, actually. When I first arrived here in your world, I saw an open house near the city wall. I figured it was only normal, since nobody was left here anymore. 
only now have I realised how strange it was, considering that every other house is closed. What are you talking about? Don't you think how unusual it is that a single house would be left open at the farthest reaches of the city, but not any other buildings? I pondered Remy's words for a moment, and realised the potential of this discovery. I determined that someone could have left some resources behind, which we could use to help in our survival. But something didn't add up. Why would an open house that was essentially an invitation for raiders have anything of use, unless... What direction did you see this house? I think it is somewhere to the east, near the guard post at one of the city gates. Then we have no time to lose, we have to go there now. Alright, off we go, look at this. We ran as fast as we could to the place Remy described. After a few minutes of constant sprinting, and a few more of catching my breath, we arrived at my destination. The house was strangely in a better shape than the rest of the city, with what seemed to be attempts made on repairing the walls, as well as the surrounding infrastructure. I noticed that the door was wide open. I feared that there could be something dangerous inside, either that or something very, very helpful. Let's hope that whatever inside's what? Is there like an explosion or something? Suddenly, I heard a small boom coming from the inside, followed by the sound of something falling. Unease and curiosity both arose within me as I considered the possibilities. What was that noise? I don't know for sure, but I can tell you one thing. It's either really good or really bad. Should I check it for you then? I don't want you to get hurt, and chances are, my scales will probably be able to protect me against whatever's inside. Remember... Your scales didn't help much against Reza's gun, and I believe that if someone was actually still there, then they most likely wouldn't hesitate to shoot. I could still be able to negotiate with whoever's inside if the need arises. I think that would be better if you were nearby to cover me instead, just in case. Okay, be safe. Hello? I slowly entered the house, making sure not to alert whatever's inside. It seemed to be quite spacious, not unlike the typical houses we used to have before the solar flare. I looked around and saw many scattered electrical parts lying around, as well as some blueprints and schematics. After some searching, I found a locked door next to a few boxes of old electrical devices. Hesitantly, I knocked, hoping for a response. Hello? What? What? How could the... The strange voice sounded oddly familiar to me, yet quite distinct. Slowly, the door unlocked, revealing a human face. What? Who's this? Ah! <laughs> what the hell are you doing here, Logan? I thought you went with all the others through the portal. And I thought you were supposed to be an ambassador doing ambassador things in the dragon's world. Now, I'll ask my question again. Why are you here? It's a really long story, so I'll summarise it to you as best I can. Okay, so what with Logan's artwork? If you know, you know. You know? Alright. We found someone. There's another human living here. And that's what I'm doing in the city. I really thought I'd be the only human left here. But to see you of all people here, it's still quite remarkable. Especially regarding the circumstances. I mean, I've been awake for... Hell, I don't even know how long. What I'm trying to say is, even after searching around the city for days, I couldn't find anybody else until now. That's because I spent most of my time here in my study working. Not that it matters, as all my work has mostly gone to waste. Oh, but now's not the time. You said that you have a dragon with you. I'll have to see if you have any hope of convincing me. That dragon has a name, you know? Come on, I'll introduce you. We walked past the huge mess that's Logan's house toward the entrance, where I found Remy patiently waiting outside. He seemed to look relieved when he saw me. Oh, you're back! I'm glad you made it out safe. Did you find anything useful? Not something, but someone. Well, I'll be damned. It actually is a dragon. And here I thought that Reza was just exaggerating about what's on the other side. Remy, meet Logan. He's somebody I used to work with once I was trying to keep myself afloat. I honestly thought that he would have been the first to leave, considering his useful skills, but it seems that I was wrong. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Logan. My name's Remy, and I shall be the ambassador of Dragonkind in your world. Although Remy was smiling, I could feel that Remy wasn't exactly happy to say those words. 
and the dragon talks. This day just keeps getting more and more interesting. Well, Remy, was it? It's an honour meeting a mythical creature such as yourself. The feeling's mutual. We actually had a lot of myths and legends about humans, but I believe that Ushio has already told you everything. You'd be correct, no need to recap anything. I do have a really good memory. What intrigues me, however, is the reason why you're still here. I mean, everybody left the city quite some time ago, so why did you stay behind? Yeah, why didn't you go through the portal? Why on earth is your place filled with so much scrap? This is really out of character, even for you. I figured that you want to know the answer to that. Well, there's no point in standing outside. Take a seat, we'll talk. We walked inside with me and Logan taking seats with Remy sitting on the floor. Turns out it's really hard to sit reasonably comfortably when there was a huge pile of electronic scraps sitting at your feet. Comfortable yet? This will be a really long answer, so I don't want you to concentrate on other things like your butt starting to cramp. I'm good. I think I'll manage. Okay, I'll start right after you went through the portal. Backstory, let's do it. Shortly after your departure into the unknown, humanity started to create a backup plan in case you and Reza weren't able to bring the generators. Much debate went around how we would do such a thing, considering that our last generator broke a while back. Eventually, one of the officials decided to ask me to do what seemed to be impossible at the time. They figured that since I achieved my master's degree in electromagnetism at a prestigious university back in the day, I'd be qualified enough. I rejected, saying that there could be no way to do what they asked. That was before we made a monumental discovery. A few miles northeast of here, one of the scouts found an abandoned copper mine with primitive, albeit intact, smelting gear and some remaining copper ore. Oh, but it gets better. Deeper in the mine, there were piles upon piles of disregarded electronic scrap. Some of the parts were even functional, to a basic degree. Upon hearing this news, the authorities freaked out, to put it lightly. Once again, they asked me for my help, hoping that with all the newly discovered scraps and copper, I could actually accomplish something. And this time I agreed. They sent me some old copies of some basic schematics and blueprints as well as the electronics. Luckily, somebody else was already responsible for smelting the copper to form usable wires. So many hours were spent with me testing which electronics could be used and which were worth as much as sand. With the aid of the schematics, as well as the parts acquired, I completed an immense task. I made a functional electrical device by using the copper wires and spare parts. It wasn't much, mind you, but when you show something like that to a society in which most people haven't seen a functioning light bulb in years, you tend to be seen as sort of a public hero. Sadly, the authorities never understood the concept of slow progression, so they gave me something that not even a genius would attempt on their own. They wanted me to make a generator from scratch. I wanted to refuse, saying that it took a lot of machines and resources to even start making one, let alone some random guy with a few spare parts and too much time on his hands, but I couldn't. I didn't want to let everyone down by showing them a bit of hope, only to take it away from them at their greatest time of need. With the help of some former associates and anybody that still knew anything about electronics, we were able to create a rough prototype based on some really old blueprints. Where the authorities even got their hands on them in the first place will always remain a mystery to me. Regardless, upon turning the generator on, it lasted about two seconds before exploding, severely injuring one of my helpers. It took about a week and a half, but I finally created a generator that could theoretically last about 57 seconds before it would start to fail. I wanted to work further on it, so that it could actually be useful and be considered safe for use, but the city desperately needed it to the point that nobody could simply wait anymore. That was when out of nowhere, Reza came. You should have seen the looks on everyone's faces when Reza stepped through the portal and walked all the way to the city centre with a large bite wound on his side. The entire city was in a frenzy, with everyone thinking that some sort of monster was about to come and kill the entire population. Reza told us about what happened to him, as well as the state of society on the other side of the portal. He made it sound as if the civilization on the other side was filled with bloodthirsty savages that have access to technology they shouldn't even be able to comprehend. As much as I respected Reza and his immense determination, I figured that maybe he had deliberately twisted the truth a bit so that he could be seen as a sort of victim. He just seemed to be that kind of guy. Well, I'm sure both of you would know more about him than I do after all. 
Long story short, since Reza was seen as a saint by the people, the authorities issued an order that everyone needed to abandon the city and go through the portal to live in much better conditions. That's how I presume a soldier found you in the first place. I was responsible for using that generator of mine to power the portal long enough so that the entire city could pass through, and the energy reserves we have left simply weren't enough. It also didn't help that the generator we had powering the portal wasn't powerful enough to transport the entire city on its own. I was to make sure that everybody could go through the portal before my generator started to fail, which caused me to stay behind. Since then, I've been trying to create another generator so that I could rejoin everyone else. That was before you came and told me everything that's happened though. Wait, so this is what all the parts in the room are for? Why would you need this much electronics? It seems like a lot of unnecessary parts to me. That's because I used some of them to repair other devices I kept in my private collection from before the soda flare so that I could actually attempt to recreate a generator. You don't think I could actually recreate advanced electronics with a single circuit board and some basic soldering tools, do you? I see your point. That is an amazing story you told. I don't think even our smartest could have done what you did from scratch. Oh, is that so? I guess I overestimated everything your kind achieved then. Uh, it's only because you're overqualified. That technology is extremely advanced. If only you could have seen everything in action. We'll go with that. If only you knew what exactly kind of things were on the other side of the portal. Like what? Things that I'll keep to myself for now. How ominous. Logan seemed to be deep in thought for a while, after which he smiled and looked at Remy with an expression similar to that of a smirk. Say, so, you wouldn't happen to know what video games are, do you, Remy? Oh, I do. In fact, I'd say I'm quite passionate about them. Don't tell me that I've repaired an old video game system just for the heck of it. Of course I did. You should know by now that when I'm not working seriously, I do stupid stuff like this. Besides, what else did you think I tested my prototype generators on? I even got a near ancient television working just to take the joke a step further. Why am I not surprised? I haven't had the time recently to test it out due to my generator exploding and all that. What do you say to hooking one of your generators up and play some video games? I feel like this would just be a waste of time. Come on guy, have some fun for once. All you did recently was focus on Reza and your duties of being an ambassador. It would be great for you to have some time off. Besides, I never had the chance to show you some of my video games. It will make for a great opportunity for you to relive some old memories. Okay. We're too busy to play video games. I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Good choice. I'll get everything ready for you. I'd recommend that Remy should go and get two generators for me. No offence, but he's way faster than you could ever hope to be. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? He is a dragon after all? Absolutely nothing. Why do you need two generators? A single one should be more than enough to power everything you need. I'd like a spare one to study and test on, so that I can try to replicate the way it's constructed. With that information, I should be able to create better prototypes that won't explode in less than a minute. Makes sense. I'll go and get two for you then. Remy stood up from the floor and stretched before exiting the door. A few minutes passed before he came back with two small generators in his claws. Logan looked at the generators in what I assumed was a combination of interest, amusement and shock. It was always hard to distinguish a specific emotion from him, regardless of what he was actually feeling. Damn, you were right. These generators are tiny compared to what we had back in the day. Are you sure that these things can even turn on? Those generators can pack an amazing punch. A single one can easily power an entire house if not more. Nothing less from state-of-the-art technology. Impressive. Even the wires are all connected in the same way as ours. It's like these things were made with human technology in mind. Well, wait a few minutes while I hook everything up. Logan went to one room that was secluded from the rest of the house. I could hear how he fumbled around looking for the video game system in what I could only assume was one of the many piles of electronics in the house. A while later, I could hear a sudden zap with him swearing shortly afterwards. He'd educated himself minutes passed before he came out again to call for me and Remy. What were those strange sounds all about? Don't worry about it, just some wires in the video game system that were acting weird, nothing to be worried about. You wouldn't even worry if you were suddenly on fire, you're way too chill for your own good. 
And you have a problem with that? No, no, I'm just pointing the obvious out. As always. We entered the room and found an old television haphazardly connected to a now forgotten video game console that I used to play in my youth, as well as a generator powering it. The console itself had a slot in which you could insert tiny cards to play the video game of your choice. Before you start, you're going to need this. Logan gave me a card with the words fighting game scribbled over it. Luckily, I didn't need to do any repairs on the card, as it survived the solar flare. How on earth this could survive, but not nanobots in someone's bloodstream will baffle me until I die. Could it have something to do with the fact that it was buried under a bunch of other electronics? Or maybe because it's way simpler compared to other parts salvaged from the mines? No, as simpler things from way deeper in the mines didn't survive. I guess that we'll simply never know. Now, what are you waiting for? Ready to relieve some old memories again. I put the card into the video game system and turned it on. Remarkably, it started to read the card and showed the main menu of the game. Somehow, Logan's work was able to prepare the system to its former glory. A wave of nostalgia washed over me as I held the controller and started to play. Suddenly, I heard Remy interrupting me. Hey, I thought we were going to play together. Do you really want to keep all the fun to yourself? Oh, sorry. I guess I got a bit carried away. Would you like to fight me, or should we play together on the same team? I think I'll fight you. I'm quite good at putting off different combos in different situations, so I think that I can manage against you. First, however, I'm going to need a bit of a warm-up though. I think that I'll need to get used to the game's controls first. I'll also need some time to get used to this controller. After all, this was made for humans in mind, so I think I'll have a hard time doing anything complicated, especially if I can't move fast enough. Regardless, I believe I'll do well. After all, I'm just that good. Well, Remy's got confident. Is that a sense of hubris I'm detecting? This isn't hubris, I'm just acknowledging my skill. No, we'll see about that. We both selected our characters, as well as the stage that we're going to fight on. I selected a mode where we could practice a bit first, so that the both of us could get used to the controls. Remy was right, however. Even if he couldn't move as effectively as he would with the controller suited for dragons, he was still an opponent to be feared. He somehow managed to perform combo after combo, despite having never played a human fighting game. This was certainly going to be a tough challenge. How was that for a warm-up? Far better than I expected. It's almost as if you've already played this game before. Well, once you master the basics in one game, you can easily create similar combos in another, regardless of what type of moveset the game uses. I'm surprised how similar your games are to the ones I used to play. Maybe there's still hope for me against you, says the guy who has absolutely destroyed me during the warm-up. Okay, you got me there. Are we gonna fight now? Okay, kick, punch, or... We gotta spam some special moves, do it, straight away. I tried to perform one of my special moves on Remy. Sadly, Remy reacted just in time and blocked it. That's not good. Remy took revenge on my attack with a punch, which connected flawlessly. Your total health is 94% and Remy's total health is 97. Are we going to fight? Okay. Uh, let's go for a kick then. I managed to land a successful kick on Remy while he's trying to start a combo. Remy leapt in to punch me, but I managed to block it just before it hit. Okay. So we're going to fight, we're going to fight. I'm going to throw, what, a punch now? Yep. I tried to land a punch. Sadly, he was able to block it. Remy took revenge on my attack with a punch, which connected flawlessly. Remy is good. Remy is good. Can we even beat this guy? Do we have any chance? Okay. I landed a kick on Remy while he's trying to start a combo. Nice. Remy decided that enough was enough and charged a special move. However, I managed to block it just in time, and avoided most of the impact. Okay, I am... winning, just about. Let's go for a special. Yes. I tried to perform a special move. He reacted just in time and blocked it. No, that sucks. And he, he punched me. Okay, we're, we're gonna work this down until something happens. Getting close now. Getting close now. Okay, I, th I think I'm gonna lose. I'll go for a kick. I managed to land a successful kick on Remy while he's trying to start a combo. Remy tried to retaliate with a kick, but I managed to block it. Health is 7%. Are we going to get like a, a double knockout? Double knockout. Uh, just go with a punch. Special. Special. Okay. And he blocked it. Of course he did. 
and he collected flawlessly. I think I have lost. Oh, oh, look, one percent and four percent. Let's go with a punch, punch, punch. I managed to land a successful punch on Remy. Critical hit. Is that it? I can't believe this. You're amazing. How were you even to play that well if it's been years since you last touched a video game? I guess it was just the muscle memory of, of my youth being revived, you know? Or maybe I'm secretly just that good. Touché. Regardless, I believe that was really fun. I'm glad that I could play some video games with you. I agree. It certainly was a fun trip down memory lane. At least we actually got around to playing some video games with each other. So, are you finished playing, or should I continue to wait? Logan's voice startled me. I became so invested in fighting against Remy that I completely forgot that Logan was watching us the whole time. Yeah, I believe we're done here. That is, unless Remy wants a rematch. I'm good, thanks. I believe that I've had more than enough excitement for now. You know, you're surprisingly good for someone who can't even walk on two legs correctly. No offence, of course. None taken. I actually considered playing video games as a career back when I was young, but that was before I discovered my passion for research. I think that you would have made a great competitive player. You certainly have the skill. Thanks, but in truth, I don't feel like it would have been a suitable career path for me in the long run. After a while, it would just start to feel repetitive and boring. Research is far more interesting. You've got a point. Well, I'd still like to test out your skill personally one day. Maybe we can fight against each other and see how that turns out. Sure, I'll just need to have some time available one day, and then we can see which one of us is better. Deal. I looked outside the window and realised that it was already night. We'd stayed so long that nearly the entire day had been spent at Logan's place, minus the small tour of the city earlier today. Regardless, thanks for your time today. It was great to see you again, especially under these circumstances. Don't worry about it. At least I know that I'm not completely alone in this damned excuse of a city. And I got to meet a dragon of all things. I swear, if anybody was still here, then the entire city would have swarmed to meet you, Remy. You'd be an instant celebrity. Really? I don't really think that I'd attract that much attention. Oh, but it's the truth. In any case, if you ever need any help, feel free to either find me or Ushio, and we'll try to assist you in any way we can. Does that count from this moment on, by any chance? Uh, sure. I guess. What can I help you with? Is there any chance that I can see your PDA? I have a slight hope that there might be something stored in there that could help me in creating and repairing some equipment. Leaving the generators here would also help, due to reasons that I already stated. If you can somehow use the information on the PDA to help rebuild the city in any way, then be my guest. Great. I gave Logan my PDA, which he received with a great smile. After some final parting words, me and Remy both left Logan to his own bizarre business. I think that is the end of another day. We arrived back at my house. Remy seemed to be more tired than usual, as he immediately went straight to the couch while I made something for me to eat. When I looked back to Remy to offer him some food, he was sound asleep. Seems Remy doesn't need someone to sleep with tonight. I finished up with the remaining dishes and went straight to bed, letting my eyes wander around my room until I eventually fell asleep as well. Okay, I think here is a good place to stop the gameplay. We're going to return in the new morning in the next video. This is Ushio signing off and hopefully I will see you next time.